Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham with Small Business Champion Bundle. This week we're going to walk you through an issues log Excel template for your small business. So that is coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham of Small Business Champion Bundle. Now, in the issues log Excel template, um, there are a few things that are critical for any issues log. So first off, if you're creating an issues log, this is typically around a project that you're putting together for your business. Now, this could be anything from opening a new store to rolling out new products, rolling out new services, or even doing end of year inventory. You know, there are projects that you put together, and from that, you need to be able to capture any sort of issues, what their priority is, what their status is, who they're assigned to, and all of that. So the good thing is the template that I'm about to show you does all of that for you. It allows you to track who the issue has been assigned to, what the severity is, what the priority is, or any sort of categorization that you want to do of these issues as well. So in that way you can review your issues on a regular basis, you know, in any sort of status meetings that you have, uh, to determine what the outstanding items are that still need to be worked on to make sure nothing goes through the cracks. So that is coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham and welcome back to the template portion of the tutorial for, your, for an issues log. Now, whenever you first bring up the template, the first thing you'll see is, uh, is this title page. I'm not going to walk you through the title page. There's an ebook here, there's questions and answers and things of that nature. Let's get right to the issues log. So you do that by clicking the issues log down here at the bottom, the tab. And what's going to be brought up for you is the chance for you to kind of now input your own information into the issues log. So at the very top, you'll see your project name, who the project manager is, what the date is, and the project sponsor. So you can just click in here and fill, fill out your own information here. Uh, the categories across the top is item, priority, status, category, description, owner and who's responsible, and then the various dates of uh, due date and completion. Uh, one of the things you'll notice here for, we'll say, priority as an example. Okay, so as you see in the priority area, there's a drop down menu, and in the drop down menu, there's critical, high, medium, and low. You could change these if you wanted to. We'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Uh, the same thing is a drop down menu with status, also with category. Um, every, in this case, we're doing editing services and asset builds, but these could be specific to, to your project, and we'll show you how to change that as well. There's also a chance over here to put in the owner, who the owner of the issue is, and who is the person responsible in the event that the owner is different from the person who's responsible. You'll also see the due dates and completion dates are here. Now, those are important because we've built in the ability to highlight things that are not only in progress, uh, but also things that are critical priority. So let's show you that then. So up here at the top in the in the menu area, you'll see there's radio buttons for highlight critical priority. And as we select yes, highlight critical priority, you'll see the ones where critical priority over here on the left hand side where that showed up as critical. Uh, once we hit the yes, all of those turned red. And the same thing over here for highlight the ones that are in progress meaning that the status is in progress and the completion date hasn't gone by yet. So we hit highlight in progress, we'll select yes, you'll see more of those become red. So what that means is you have a real quick way for all of the issues that you have to be able to bring the right ones to your attention. You can also, from the menu bar, you see there are, there are down arrows here, you can select here and select just the people you're interested in. So in this case we'll say Rick, we can bring up my items, and we can do the same thing for categories, for status, etc. So there's the ability to do the filtering for all of these. All of that's built in. You don't have to worry about how do you build filters, how do you build drop downs, any of that. We've done all of that for you, and all of the conditional formatting and everything for you. But what you may say is the people responsible that you have in here aren't the people on my team. I need to be able to put in my own information. So let's show you how to update that. Down here at the bottom, you'll see there's also something called an issues log setup. So as we select that, you'll see there are not only instructions over here on the right hand side, uh, but also the list. Now these are the lists that drive the four drop down menus. 
So what you could do now is not only come in and change these if you wanted to, or delete them out, or you know, have as many as makes sense for you, but you could also put in uh, brand new people at the very end. So you could extend the current drop-down list to include even more line items, an even larger number of line items. So in this case, we'll say this ended with Beth, and if we wanted to, we could throw in a random, a random animal, and we'll say there'll be an elephant here, and we'll select that. And not only that, we'll overwrite Beth, Beth's name, and instead of Beth, we'll type in giraffe as an example. So you could have done the same thing with category, with status, priority, all of that to have things that are specific to you and to your project. So now if we go back to the issues log, assigned to for the person responsible, and the person responsible, there's an opportunity now to have that to a giraffe and to an elephant. And so you could have selected that just as easily. So that is an issues log. That's how you play around with highlights and whether or not things are in progress and whether or not they're critical how you sort, how you use the drop-down menus, how you use the drop-down selectors, and how you change the drop-down selectors specific for your project. So right about now, there should be underneath me a subscribe button. Feel free to click on the subscribe button. We put out these, these tutorials on a regular basis. You can also, over on the right-hand side, see a number of other tutorials that we've done. Feel free to click on one of those. That'll take you to you know, things around finance or marketing or any of the other tutorials that we've done. We put out these on a regular basis, so feel free to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, this is Rick Grantham of Small Business Champion Bundle. Thank you.